So good evening, everybody. Uh, Ryan and Tiffany Kelly, Ecuador Shores Realty. Uh, coming to you this evening from a different locale, obviously, because you guys are normally used to seeing us uh, on the beach, you know, living the beach life with the ocean and the waves in the background and everything. Um, and, and this is obviously not that. So first off, yes, we are currently back in the States right now. Um, we had to come back here for a medical condition that Tiffany's been dealing with for a little over a year now mm -hmm. um, and this is really why we wanted to be able to do this video here for you guys this evening because we know that a lot of you guys obviously know what's been going on with her and we have a lot of new followers and viewers that don't so we kind of wanted to be able to include everybody um, give uh, everyone an update and then of course also give a lot of our new viewers and followers kind of like the backstory about how all this happened and what she's been dealing with and you know, at the very least, you guys are all like family, so you're going to be included. And hopefully, I don't know, we might be able to find somebody out there who's dealt with this type of thing or is currently dealing with it. Or, you know, maybe another doctor or specialist who knows what she's going through and kind of help us, you know, give us some advice moving forward. So, um, that being said, she's told this story countless times. So, how did this all happen? <laughs> This all happened last year in May, in the beginning of COVID. I was in the gym without my trainer, doing a deadlift, and was the very last rep of the very last set, was lifting a little bit extra weight. I was pushing myself and just kind of lost my form of being exhausted. And um, I guess I just felt an instant pain, and then I had an instant tingle. Didn't think much of it, continued my workout said, mention something to Ryan, and he's like, yeah, maybe just tweaked a little. Continued that workout, the next day continued that workout, and then started having symptoms, and I couldn't get out of bed, and every day was, was different, and I would try to sit in different positions, and I had all these tingles, and it's like my whole body was tingling, and I was getting numbness, and weakness, and just bizarre stuff. And I went for an MRI with Dr. Juan Fernandez, for my lumbar and that was bulging just a little but he was like it's not making sense where you're saying you have like a metal taste and especially if it's something down in the lumbar we know that that's not going to affect anything up in the head or the arms so on june i think 5th it was i went to take a shower and my face was all just tingling that day and i had really strong symptoms i went to take a shower and immediately when the water hit me, I had just major vertigo and I thought I was going to pass out. So I was rushed to the hospital and I had five MRIs from the, the head, the cervical, the thorax, and the lumbar. And that's when they found the hernia in the C4, C5 area and proceeded to kind of just take it easy from there and get other doctors' opinions. So we reached out to University of Miami sent in all of our records and MRIs and just kind of said, could this be giving these types of symptoms? And there was cord compression. It was a pretty big hernia, a few doctors have said now. So, but a few of my symptoms, no one's kind of really understood. It's like an onion, we're breaking down the layers little by little and everybody knows the back is a pretty, like, long recovery to get into so we're kind of just taking it day by day and um just breaking it all down and trying to going figure things from out. there trying yeah. to figure things out i've had a lot of symptoms with this i've got vestibular problems now neurological problems nervous system problems neuropathy so i'm with the neurologist and everything right now so far has come back negative which doesn't make sense because I still do have a lot of neuropathy in the pins and needles at different times and my symptoms constantly keep changing. So, so yeah, but... Um, yeah, we're just kind of a little bit lost because when, once we discovered basically that she had this, the, the hernia C4, C5, um, it was right when COVID was first starting. Mm -hmm. And for those of you guys who remember, you know, the whole world was basically shutting down at that point. And we had talked to the University of Miami, the doctor there had seen stuff. And he's like, yeah, I would probably recommend getting a surgery for the disc replacement. But then we started talking to the doctors back in the States to be able to have it done. And 
the problem was that a lot of them were shutting down. And because mm -hmm. it was technically an elective surgery, they're like, it could be months before you're able to come and you actually be able to get this. Um, but in Ecuador, uh, at the Omni Hospital, which is one of the top hospitals in the country, um, we had the head of neuro to mm -hmm. be able to do the surgery. And he's like, not a problem. I can literally get you guys in next week. And so we were able to get that done right in Ecuador at, at one of the top hospitals. Yeah, we held out for as long as we could. I tried physical therapy because, you know, surgery's last resort. So we try to get back to the States. We had tickets to leave on a Monday. We actually, I had surgery July 4th on Saturday of 2020 last year. And just was, I wasn't able even, it was very uncomfortable to ride in the car. My neck for the car ride. Yeah, so, she felt very like her head was going to fall no, off. Yeah, it was, no, it was very, no, there, there was no like no support no is, is what she was, uh, uh, you know, cervical instability Yeah, what she was feeling. Yeah. Yes. And that's basically what all the doctors were like, yeah, let's go ahead and get this done. It needs to be done. Um, and that was basically it. We figured that as soon as the surgery was done, that everything would kind of go back to normal. The majority of the symptoms went away. Yeah, for the first you know few weeks, I guess. All the tingles couple months, and everything was yeah. good. Um, you know, she was going through PT. Everything was good, and then slowly but surely, all these symptoms started to come back up again. Mm -hmm. um, like when I would do a steroid shot in the lumbar, it created symptoms through back in the head and the tingles, the arms and doctors have never really understood how something down here is now creating back here. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. If you kind of know, I guess, about dealing, if you ever have dealt with back or dealt with nervous system, it's just kind of trial and error. And it is a very hard thing to really pinpoint certain things if things are not showing up on MRIs, which everybody knows I've been through my share of oh my MRIs goodness. in a year. She's literally had 26? 30. Is it up to, oh my goodness. So there's a 30 different scans. So she's been actually in the MRI machines, um, I think 12 to 12 to 13 times. And then with the total amount of scans that she's had total done, because mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes she'll go into the, into the machine and she'll have one or two. And other times she's been in, she's had four or five yeah. within, one time. within one mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Um, and we're very blessed even in Ecuador to be able to have the kind of medical equipment that we've had at our disposal because at the Omni, they have a brand new MRI machine. I mean, mm -hmm. she was one of the first people to be able to get to use it. It was only a couple of months old when she first started using it. And it was an amazing piece of machinery that even mm -hmm. when she's had MRIs done back here in the States, she's like, honey, that the one in Ecuador is a better machine. Yeah, I'm like, do you guys have the one with music? Do you have the he headphones? I'm like, no. I'm like, well, Ecuador does. Yeah, a little bit of a backstory on that. She, she suffers from a little bit of... Um, claustrophobia. Uh, yeah, claustrophobia. So in an MRI machine, obviously, if you're claustrophobic, that's the last place you want to be. Yes. Uh, but the MRI machine back at the Omni was a really big open machine. And, you know, she's got the headphones. So you can kind of play some really music. The music really and... makes, when you're in there for two and a half hours, the music definitely helps. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it's been one of the ongoing issues is because now that she's had all of these MRIs and obviously half of those were done after the surgery and the surgeons back in Ecuador, the surgeons here in the U.S. And we've dealt with multiple surgeons and specialists, everybody mm -hmm. from Duke to Mayo to some NASCAR specialists. Um, and everybody sees the MRIs and they're like, we, we don't get it because it looks to us that the, the previous surgery, the disc replacement C4, C5, where she's got the plate and the pins and everything else, everything looks good. Um, but she still has these issues where unfortunately she, she has days that are, that are good and she feels halfway normal and other days she can barely get out of bed. Um, and it's mainly because of the, the issues of the vertigo, the, um, the, the walking on sand kind of feeling, just not a lot of, of stability, shall we say. Yeah, a lot of vestibular rocking, numbness, weakness. Yeah, like, like tingles throughout the tingles, extremities and things like that. The pins and needles, there's just, it's just different. Yeah. And then one of the biggest also question marks is, well, one of the other things is that blessing and a curse at the same time is she has no pain, yeah. which is really I've good. Never She's had never pain. had pain. Um, but, and that's a big blessing because obviously none of us want to have to deal with pain and I don't want to see her in pain. Yeah. Um, but it's also a curse because if she had pain, then she could go, oh, it hurts here. It hurts here. And then the specialist would be able to kind of, you know, pinpoint where to look. But because there is no pain, it's all these different other symptoms. Nobody's really able to figure it out. And it's just like what Tiff said, it's a bunch of trial and error. Um, so it's just kind of difficult. And then the other biggest thing that has kind of thrown everybody for a loop is that she can physically not lift more than 10 pounds, um, sometimes even not even five pounds. 
And if she does, I mean, how do you feel? You get like the strong tingles, painful tingle, look at just tingles and uh, weakness, and it's a bizarre feeling. Yeah, it's like I just lose complete weakness through the spinal cord, and it's like my body gets pushed down to the ground. Yeah, and so it's, it's just it's especially it's very difficult, hard yeah. to explain my symptoms as well because it's just very unique. Oh, and it's it's painful for me and, and our entire family to be able to see what she's having to go through because this is a woman that, I mean, we've been physically active our whole lives. I mean, in the gym our whole lives, and and ever since you know I've known her, we've been together what, 12, mm -hmm. 13 years now, mm -hmm. um, and we've always been out running around and doing physical activities and you know, Jim and everything else. And now that she's been out of this for over a year and that's another issue, you know, mentally that's very difficult and, yeah. you know, yeah. but she's strong. She's Slowly pushing through. back in. Yeah. I'm back in physical therapy now and... Which is great. Yeah. It's just a bunch of going around in circles to see what works, what doesn't work. And just to keep up my strength and get the muscles and walking and physical therapy and just different things. Yeah. yeah, she's strong. She'll she'll push through. She always does. Yeah, she amazes me. That's why I married her. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if anybody out there, I mean, obviously, if if anybody out there who who knows about this kind of a of a subject matter or has any experience in this themselves, it's one of the issues where not a lot of people understand like the rocking in the boat. It's probably the biggest symptom. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? A lot of it, yeah. People, have, I've heard it's like kind of related with the vestibular in in that but it's like I don't have it as much vestibular in here I have it like through my spine yeah like she says it, 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 it's what like a, a, a slinky where she feels her her common phrase that I hear all the time is that she, she feels like she's walking on a beach she feels like she's walking on sand like I, the ground I have a bounce I have a bounce in my spine I feel like when I walk or like through my legs like through the nerves there's a lot through the nerves and stuff I bounce when I walk if I take certain medicine, it makes like the nerves inside my body, I feel like my body bounces more, it moves more. It's just very bizarre. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we just again wanted to be able to take some time this evening and be able to update you on how Tiff is doing. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys out there, you guys, you know, email us and call us mm -hmm. up and text message and you're like, hey, why don't we see you as much as Tiffany? And, and this is basically why, you it's know. It's very hard for yeah. me to get out. It's, it's very hard for me to do videos with him anymore. It's very hard. There's, I mean, I just recently started riding in a car again. Uh, it's just been very challenging year. That again, it's it's the most frustrating part for us is is just not ha really having the answers. I mean, mm -hmm. as everyone out there knows, medical a lot of it is kind of trial trial and error, and you just yeah. have to continue to try things. And we've tried so many things, and you know yeah. everything. So. Um, again, if you guys have any ideas to be able to, to help her, give advice or whatnot, we're more than happy to hear it. Please you know, leave your comments in the sections below. Feel free to email us directly, of course. Um, we're always happy to hear from you guys regardless. And we really appreciate all of your support, your love yes, and support. Thank I you mean, so much. We get you know emails and calls on a regular basis, and everyone always asks me. It's one of the first things. How's Tiffany doing? How's <laughs> Tiffany doing? So um, yeah. again, it's another reason why we really wanted to do this video. And we apologize that it's kind of taken us a while to get to this. Um, and do this, but this is obviously... It was, yeah, it was very traumatic in the beginning. The first yeah. year was very traumatic, so it's been some time and and to, to be, I guess, swallow the maybe the new way of my life and living and everything else, so... But we really love you guys. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add? I don't think so. Just any questions, we'll answer them. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, by all means, uh, anything we might not have covered in, in this video that you guys, any doctors or specialists out there that have questions, uh, different advice, by all means, please feel feel free to reach out to us. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I guess that's it. We will let you guys get on to it. Again, we always appreciate your time here with us. We know it's valuable. Please don't forget to follow us on all of our social media, yes. you know, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and website and all that good stuff. Um, I will still be bouncing back and forth with uh, Tiff's health, so I'm still going to be there uh, doing, you know, showings with you guys. We still have our full team back there as well, so just in case I'm back here with Tiff, we still have the full team boots on the ground to be able to help you. So, you know, service is always 150%, as you guys already know. Um, but again, we really appreciate your time this evening. So, thank you very much, guys. Thank have, you guys so much. Have a good night.